The state of Michigan is currently located within the stable interior of the North American Craton, which means that it's pretty geologically inactive compared to something like the west coast of the United States where you've got cities in California getting rocked by earthquakes, subduction, faulting, all this jazz, right? You'd say that the stable interior is pretty stable, hence the name. But it wasn't always this way. And I want to take this video to explore some of the Precambrian geologic history of Michigan. So just how rich and varied the processes have been that have led to the rocks and the composition that we see today. Now I did a video on the, Michi the Michigan Basin, which if you know basins, right, you would expect the oldest stuff to be on the edges and then it gets progressively younger as it goes to the center. So in the lower peninsula where the basin is centered, what we mostly see is some really young stuff, you know, stuff that's Mesozoic and younger in age. And you have to go really far out, basically into the upper peninsula, the tips of it, to see these Precambrian rocks at the surface. So it's pretty difficult, you know, we've got very few good surface exposures of really old rocks, which means that everything we say here is, you know, it's very educated guesses, but you might still call them guesses, right? Because no one was around to see this <laughs> billions of years ago. That's the scale we're operating on with Precambrian history. But enough about that. Let's jump right in with the Kiwatin period. We call them periods, even though they're not official divisions on the geologic timescale. But the Kiwatin. So this was a time, we believe, where a pyric seas covered the state, and there were streams flowing into them, and these created good a good environment for deposition of sediments by stream flow, of course, and settling out of water. And that's observable, we would believe, as sedimentary strata, which today has been metamorphosed in formations like the Kichi Formation, which is in Marquette County, and the Mona Formation. Now, the Mona Formation is particularly interesting because it contains pillow structures, which makes us also believe that not only were sediments being deposited, but while that sea, that Epiric Sea, was covering the state, there was lava or magma coming up from the crust and, you know, coming out where it begins to form these pillow structures due to the interaction between the lava and the water. That's the Kiwitin. Not too much we know about it. It begins 3.5 billion years ago. At least that's when the oldest rock was found. And that kicks off what we call the early Precambrian history of Michigan. And that's going to transition into the Laurentian. Now, if the Kiwitin was mostly calm sedimentation, creating what we believe would be flat layers like this, then the Laurentian represents our first period where metamorphism might have began to occur. This is when we had extensive intrusion of granitic magmas altering the Kiwatin rocks. These magmas mainly cooled deep within the earth, but some of them reached the surface. So we had both plutonic and extrusive igneous rocks. But going by our little diagram here, you might expect to see a whole lot of contact metamorphism in these areas where you have this pluton making contact with the sedimentary strata of the Kiwatin time. And then a whole lot of regional metamorphism maybe, right? The Laurentian, it was an orogeny. So we would expect to see a whole bunch of metamorphism on these folds as well due to the compression. These can be observed in formations like the Norway Lake Granitic Gneiss, which we believe is formed from these really early granites that have been now metamorphosed further into granitic gneisses. Okay, so that's going to lead us into an unconformity. We have some erosion. Anytime there's a gap in the geologic time that we perceive, we're going to end up, you know, estimating an unconformity at some point. So we think that that was between the Laurentian and the next period we're going to get into. But some erosion took off the topmost layers of that, so we would represent that here in our little graphics as cutting the tops of those folds off, maybe having a little surface exposure there, a surface exposure of this anticline, if you want to think about how that might look, and then some of this igneous rock also exposed. Now the next thing we had was more sedimentation, and this is called the Knife Lake or the Timiskaming period of Michigan's Precambrian history. And this is one where we really don't know much about it either, right? Sedimentation is a little bit harder to break down. It's a lot easier to say when, to, when you have reason to believe that there were multiple orogenies throughout history, but sedimentation is a more continuous and less violent 
process. So it's more difficult to find distinct periods of sedimentation within geologic time. But we believe it's sedimentation because before, and this is once again putting everything relative to each other, before our next period, before we have rocks of Algamin age, there's sort of a there's sort of a missing piece between the Laurentian and Algamin orogenies. We found what's called the East Co the excuse me East Branch Arcos, and if you know Arcos, then it's a pink sandstone, right? Sedimentary, and it's pink because it has a lot of orthoclase in it. You know the mineral that looks kind of <laughs> they say like horse meat. And so if that's the case, well then you say, okay, so we had. This, there was no, in the Kiwatin, there was no, there were pillow, pillowy basalts and there were horizontal strata of, of sedimentary rocks. The Laurentian introduced our first granites and we have Arcos that's younger than Algamin in age, which means, well, what must have happened during this time? The Knife Lake period must have been some erosion of those original Laurentian intrusions right, which might have come from this little unconformity here, and then redeposition, so probably by more stream flow. Maybe there was another Epiric Sea covering Michigan at this point in its geologic history. That's the big thing we know about the Knife Lake, uh, erosion and redeposition. Then we get to the Algamin orogeny, which is once again one of our big fun orogeny events. We had initial intrusions, Maybe some of these in here. Some of those could be the old intrusions, right? Maybe they're intruding on the old intrusions. But these intrusions were followed by severe crustal compressions and faulting, which became known as the algamin orogeny. So you take rock that's already been deformed due to one orogeny and do it again. What's that going to do? Well, it's going to make the grade of metamorphism even higher. It's going to transform even the igneous rocks that were transforming the other rocks before it. So this is a point, yeah, that I was trying to hammer home before. These changes really add up, and it makes it really hard to determine the exact origins of something like going all the way back to Kiwatin time. You know, what were these rocks really like to begin with? Hard to say because they're so high-grade metamorphosed at this point. Uh, but intense heat and pressure during this orogeny resulted in regional metamorphism, transforming virtually all of the pre-existing rocks within the region, right? The Laurentian was much more intrusive. You know, the, the, ero the orogeny event was much smaller than the Algamin. In the Algamin, it was much more severe. So Algamin, you would have a lot more regional versus Laurentian, where it was more, and again, I say more because it wasn't absolute, so it was no one versus the other. But this was a lot more regional, this was a lot more contact metamorphism. And finally, I'll round this out here to prevent from going on too long because there's a lot to explore with the Michigan Precambrian history. We're going to end with extensive erosion. There's a pretty significant unconformity in the Precambrian geologic history of Michigan. And this unconformity is actually what creates such a large gap in geologic time that it brings us to, I said that the Kiwatin began about 3.5 billion years ago. This is gonna bring us to about 2.4 billion years. So all these, the Kiwatin, the Laurentian, the Knife Lake, and the Algamin periods take place over the course of roughly 1.1 billion years. And they are what comprise what is called the early Precambrian history of Michigan before we get extensive erosion, erasing once again, a lot of this precious geologic history and leaving us a little bit more in the dark before we reach what is called the early Huronian, which is going to transition us into the middle Precambrian history of Michigan. We'll talk about that in a future video. That's going to be a lot more interesting because it has applications to iron. This is where we believe a lot of Michigan's iron deposits came from, which of course sparked a decently strong iron mining industry up in the Upper Peninsula. Uh, now it's kind of died out. There are a couple, uh, one operation that I know that's going real strong up there. Um, but that ought to do it for this one. That is the early Precambrian. It's a bit of a mess, but it is the role of the geologist to be the interpreter and the storyteller. And that's what we're doing here. <laughs>